For everyone who just joined, uh, welcome to this webinar where we have current students from the area subject uh, subject area program. So area studies subject area program. That was difficult to say, sorry. <laughs> Uh, and today we have given you the opportunity to ask any questions you have about the master's programs in Asian studies and Middle Eastern studies. Um, we don't have a representative from the European studies master's program in this session, but if you have any questions about that program, you can go ahead and ask anyways, and we will do our best to answer. So uh, today you have a Q&A where we will let you ask your questions. So for any questions, there are no stupid questions, just ask ahead uh, anything about what it's like to study these programs. And Alban and Rayhan will be able to, to attend to your questions. So Rayhan, would you be able to introduce yourself and let us know what you're studying, where you come from, a background story? Yes, of course. My name is Rayhan, I am from Taiwan and I did my undergraduate in both Taiwanese and Japanese universities before coming here to Lund. And now I am a second year master's student at Asian Studies. My focus is on the societies of Japan, Korea, Taiwan, China, basically Northeast and East Asia. But I also have classes on Southeast Asia, which I find very interesting here. We will talk about it later. Thank you. Fantastic, thank you so much. And Alba, would you like to introduce yourself? Yeah. Hi, everyone. Um, my name is Alba. I come from Barcelona and there I, I did my bachelor's of global studies and I had the opportunity there to start learning Arabic, which is what kind of like introduced me to uh, the Middle East and I could learn a little bit more of the region. And I was also very interested in migration and gender since the very beginning. So I that's why I started to look back for different programs. I, I ended up here in Lund um, studying Middle Eastern studies. Uh, currently in my second year and yeah as I said before like the interest on migration has just kept on growing and it's the area that I'm trying to specialize in but it's like incredibly interdisciplinary so there's a lot of things to learn from these masters which is really great yeah fantastic to hear thank you so much and my name of course I have to introduce myself as well my name is Cecilia Jepson and I work as an international marketing manager here at the university uh, which means I'm actually since 2016 working with healthy students throughout the application process. So I've spent a lot of time uh, answering questions about the application process and the programs we have on offer and so on. But today Alba and Rewan are the specialists when it comes to, to the programs here. So once again, I'm going to encourage you to use the Q&A to ask any questions you have about the content of the program or uh, what courses they like or dislike or any any question is welcome and in the meantime i'm going to start asking you alba what is your favorite thing about studying the middle eastern program and studying at lund university overall well studying um i, I will start with lund university i think um at, at lund university it's quite a different experience than i had um when i studied in barcelona um like the freedom that we have with the courses, the flexibility with like assignments, with seminars and stuff. It's something that I had never experienced before. And it's very useful, especially if you come from another country and you're here and you're like still trying to, I don't know, settle and find people. And at the same time, like look for an apartment and try to live on your own, sometimes for the first time. It's very nice to have like a flexible education. I would say that allows you to, I don't know, sometimes just put in mind like a little bit of your mental health and be like, well, maybe I will not hand in the assignment now and I will hand it in like in two weeks. So that that's very helpful. And in regards to the master's, I, I really enjoy it. It's an area I'd never studied before, very in depth. So I, I really appreciated that. And I really like that it's very interdisciplinary and it allows everyone to focus on exactly what they want to. The assignments are very broad and you can always write about what you're more interested in. So even if they give you information about everything, you are able to focus yourself. And also like in regards to the final thesis and stuff. So it, that's very good. And the fact that we can go on exchange and the fact that we can go do an internship, that's also very useful, I would say. So. Sounds like a program with a lot of opportunities and with opportunities to also tailor the program to your specific interests, which is, of course, very exciting. Mm -hmm. Exactly. Yeah, that's really, really great, to be fair, like just to be able to um, 
kind of like because in the end it's a very broad area and like i'm sure like as asian studies so it's very nice to at least because i'm very interested in north africa basically because we do middle east and north africa so even if you get information from all the region you are always able to bring it back to your main interest which is very nice yeah. and ray one if i ask you the same question about asian studies what is your favorite thing about the program and studying at lund university I'll start from Asian studies. My program is a very cute program. We have like 30 students per year and the student body is so diverse. We have students from, I think, 10 countries or something. And then it's just exciting to study with so much, so many different people from different backgrounds. And you can basic, and, you, and it's also very, very easy to meet people here in Lund in general. And in my program in Asian studies, we not only do east asia such as japan korea china we also have a lot of focus on southeast asia which i think is a very precious opportunity for me to learn about a region i am not necessarily very very um familiar with just say, yeah and then we have a lot of teachers from who specialize in different issues in East Asia or Southeast Asia. And I think that's just, a lot of times it's not just deep thing, it's also eye-opening to me. Mm -hmm. yeah. And then in terms of Lund University, I just like the student life here. It's so dive, it's so interesting. And there's always things going on besides Lund is such a cute town to be in. Today I was walking from my dorm to school and it was like, or all oh, the Christmas illuminations and everything I was like, oh, this city is so cute and there's so many <laughs> nice christmas trees here you're just like wow it's just so nice right now yeah i love how you're describing lund as a cute town but it really is because uh, compared to where many of you come from uh, a lot of our students come from really large cities uh, capital cities around the world and then they come to lund which is a very very small town with 120,000 uh, people living here and 40,000 students so it's it's a big it's a big difference for, for a lot of people coming here. And I think it's something a lot of you like enjoy as well. Uh, but was there anything, Ray Juan, when you came to, to Lund and to Sweden in general that surprised you a lot? A cultural clash or anything? I am surprised that when I, how um, approachable my professors are here, because I can just ask a lot of questions I want in either class settings or even just when I email them, I could just, hey, Itzy, I don't even have to call her dear Professor Elizabeth. I just, hi, Itzy, to my professor. And then she, hi, Rick, I'm back. I was like, wow, this is really nice. And I feel like this professor, the hierarchy here is very flat. And then it creates a very, very nice environment for students to interact with their teachers. Yeah, that's a culture shock for me. And also, I'm appre appreciating this culture shock. It's something we hear from a lot of students. Uh, and Alba, would you agree to this? And do you have anything else that surprised you when you came to, to Lund University? Yeah, like, um, I totally agree with this. It's very, uh, to be fair, I, I, it's something that I already had in certain ways in Barcelona with small classes. Um, so it was not that much of a shock, but it is something that is here and it's very appreciated when you're able to like reach out to your professors at any time. That's really great. Um, but for me, the most cultural shock in terms of education, I think it's what I've mentioned briefly at the beginning, that it's the flexibility with assignments and exams and all these things. Um, my previous university, everything was very strict. So it was this exam, whether you pass it or you not pass it, you have this deadline. This is what it is. But here you find that sometimes like they take into consideration your context and that not everyone has the same pace and not everyone has the same like way of working maybe. Mm -hmm. um, so that's very appreciated. And like being able to hand in something two weeks or a month later without being penalized, that's really appreciated. So also, yeah. Thank you so much, Alba. Uh, and would you like to, Ray Juan, perhaps elaborate a bit the relationship between students and professors and teachers? Like I said, I think the teachers here are very, very approachable. And they also spend 
a lot of effort in trying to helping us do better. So I think the question is not about how I could how um, approach my professors because they're already there and so approachable is what I can ask what and how would I ask I, I don't know if this makes sense I have to think about it my god yes, no worries. I'm just I'm just, I'm, I'm just appreciating the fact that my teachers are so nice so easy to talk to so sometimes I'm not even considering what form and am I being rude or something like that and I can just voice my concerns yeah a, 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 a lot of things and people would relate to me or give them their opinions and this is not just with the professors it's also with my course coordinator with other basically the staff i've met here at the university i have this kind of feeling that everyone is willing and are very happy to talk to me with me and i think that is very helpful and i appreciate it a lot Thank you so much, Rehan. And, and if we move on to like the academic setting or the, the study environment and learning style. Uh, so Abba, how would you say, what, is, what are the classes like in the academic environment? What, what is it like studying? Um, in terms of the classes, I, I really enjoy the classes. As Rehan said, like, I think both of our programs are quite small. Um, and we have like very few people in the class. And I really appreciate that. The fact that the teacher knows your name and knows a little bit like where you come from and your background and stuff. That's very nice of them. Um, so like being in a class with only like 15, 20 people, it's very nice because discussions are really great. And like they tend to be debates and they at least most of my classes when it comes to like seminars and stuff, it's very nice because we have like half of lecture half of the class is lecture and then half of it is a seminar and the seminars are just discussions so everyone is allowed to speak and everyone is allowed to reply and that's very nice like in the end like the professor becomes kind of like a moderator you can still like, ask questions but it's very um like self-learning in many ways which is very nice um and most of our examinations are essays which is very great because it it points you towards the final thesis which is like a very big thing so it kind of like prepares you to it um like teaching you how to write um, an assignment might be a literature review or then you might have a course on methodology then you might have like um something else that it's always related to teaching you how to write the thesis which is very nice well at the same time like just giving you course content so yeah i think that's it <laughs> Thank you, Alba. And, and Rohan, how would you describe a typical week studying Asian studies? A typical week? That's an interesting question. So for my program, I think I would, on, in, on average, only have three lectures per week, including seminars. So I'm only spending, and each seminar is only two hours or lecture. So it's very different from what I was, I'm used to back home because it's very short here. So I'm only supposed to spend six hours in the classroom per week. And I think that's very interesting because that allows me a lot of time to study on my own, to explore my own, what interests me. And so a typical week for me feels like I would read the readings, in the morning go to school in the afternoon and then come yeah. back and then have student life in the evening with my friends probably because this winter here is kind of long and dark here so a lot of the times we spend with other students we just hang out and then we would kind of do this a few one two or three times a week and then i would also still have a lot of time to read the things i'm interested in, either from the library or from my own yeah and on weekends we are if i don't have a deadline that's approaching i would have be able to explore and chill but if i have a deadline then it spends in the library yeah it depends mm -hmm. but i think my program is also kind of yeah a, a lot of essays also write very heavy very we put a lot of emphasis on writing so it, it just gives me so much opportunities to 
improve my writing skills in English and improve my academic writing skills, which I also appreciate. Yeah. Thank you so much. And Alba, do you agree with this? Is it, is it sort of the same for the Middle Eastern studies? Yeah, I would say it's kind of like more or less the same type of week that I have. Um, so like we also have these classes in the afternoon, which for me, it's, it works really great because you're able to use the morning um, for doing the readings for the class. You go to class and then afterwards, like after the class, you still have hours to do other activities, which is great. So um, I tend to just dedicate the mornings for studying. Then in the afternoons, go to class. We also only have two days a week. We have lectures. That's the only thing. We have three hour lectures. Um, and then the afternoon, the evenings you have like I try to spend it on free time for myself, like either painting or going somewhere or having a coffee or just like grabbing a drink with some friends. Um, and sometimes also with like other organizations that I'm part of, that I'm part of or uh, the nations that it's like a whole deal that everyone has to explore and stuff like this. So yeah, I think that's basically the same, kind of like the same as Ray Kwan said. That's fantastic. And I think it's important to, to mention about well, the student life uh, because it's such a big deal at the university and it's something that a lot of students really enjoy uh, when they're here. Uh, so Ray Hun, what, what would you say about student life as an international student at Lund University? Great. Like we, this is basically a college town. So it's just all students around you and if there's it's pros and cons the process you'll be, always be able to meet people like bump into your friends or sometimes your acquaintances on the streets but sometimes it's annoying but like but like that's very fun and then the student life is just just a lot of opportunities for students to do there's nations there's a lot of student organizations there's also the student unions and just everything. There's just so many, and people are from so different backgrounds, literally from everywhere in the world. You can find someone here in Lund, someone to represent their country here in Lund. It's just a very eye-opening experience because I'm from a more homogenous society and coming to Lund is like, wow, we are these people. And of course, there's a lot of Swedish, Swedish students and students from the Nordics, but they're also interesting. But, but you've never experienced it being difficult to take part of student life because you're an international student. Mm, let me think. I think if you're if you are having a difficult time trying to find anything, I think you just haven't found the one the right one for yourself. But there should have your right one, no matter who you are. You just have to find the right person, right people to hang out with, and they're all possible. There's all sometimes all unexpected opportunities, as there's like so many people here from so many different backgrounds. You just have to find your thing. For me, that's myself. Yeah. Thank you. And I think Lund University does offer, we usually say something for everyone, depending on what you're interested in. Um, Alba, what is your take on student life? I, I really enjoy it. Like it's it's also like a big cultural shock. Um, I, as I said, I come from Barcelona, which is a very big city. It's full of life. Uh, there's a lot of things to do all the time, but it's never something specific for students. Whereas here, it's a very small town. Everyone knows each other, which is, as Rayvon said, we, we actually had this conversation like not long ago, that it's just a weird setting where you will meet everyone everywhere you go. Um, but that's also something very nice and very comforting because you will always have someone to have a coffee with or like to do something with, which is very nice. Um, in terms of the nations, I think they do a lot for like the town to keep it alive to like you you will always find a nation that it's open where you can go with your friends or like you will always find a club or a branch or a lunch to go to, which is very nice. And with student prices, which that's also makes a big difference. Um, the student union, so for people who are like more involved in like university life and kind of like are more interested in this, um, it's also very great. I really enjoy this, um, to be fair, um, the student life in general. And in terms of having difficulties, um, I don't feel like I felt difficulties um, here because I, I found very quickly a group of friends that I can rely on. Um, but I would I would have to say that um, there is a cultural shock with uh, Swedish people and like Swedish culture and the culture that I come from, um, like 
southern Mediterranean people, like Mediterranean people in general, we tend to be like very open and very like uh, we tend to be in the street all the time and do a lot of things. And like it's a very contrast with here and how things are more like inside, of course, because of the weather, like what are you going to do? But like it's very indoors and sometimes it gets a little bit more to find like um, Swedish friends. So people who are from here. Um, but that's not like something impossible. Like right now I can say I have many Swedish friends from here. It just takes a little bit longer and you to get involved into this new culture. So, but I, overall, I think, um, the, the existence of all these organizations and all this support that you have, it's very great, especially if you're like international student who's living abroad, um, sometimes for the first time away from your family, away from your friends, you come here by yourself. So like relying on all these associations and nations and stuff, it's very nice, really. Thank you, Alba, and thank you, Rehan, for sharing your thoughts about student life as well. And of course, student life is something that's important as a combination to, to actually studying. And there is a lot of time spent on individual learning, not only classes. And of course, I think enjoying student life is also part of networking and, and getting, getting to know people and getting to know yourself, gaining some experience. And in terms of experience and networking, uh, Ray Juan, in the Asian Studies Master's program, are there any opportunities for networking with the industry or at career fairs or anything similar? Or in terms of career development as part of the program? I think my program is still largely academic oriented. So we wouldn't have so much like a job fair or those too much job opportunities. But I did find an internship from the um, from the connection of the program. They posted an opportunity for an internship at a think tank and I applied for it. And that's why I'm going to do now for the next semester. Mm -hmm. So I wouldn't say we put hope put a very big emphasis on it, but it's not like it's impossible. There's still possibilities if you look. Yeah. Wonderful. Uh, do you sometimes have guest lectures coming? Oh yes, we, we do have those those guest lectures and kind of stuff. We do guest lectures from academics of other institutions once in a while. So if you're if you the job um, career building is in the academics. I think it suits you very well. Yeah. Thank you. And Alba, what, what are your thoughts about this for the Middle Eastern program? Well, I, I would like kind of agree in many ways um, that also our master's, it's very oriented towards research. Um, there is a lot of emphasis on it, like methodology courses and like the emphasis that it's put on the thesis. It always like brings you back to like research and academic field. Um, and in terms of that, there's a lot of support, like um, the master's, it's it's part of graduate school, but we are very tied to the Center for Middle Eastern Studies, where there's a lot of researchers and they invite us over all the time to conferences, to panels, to debates. When they present their new research, we're always there, like we're always invited to have like FICA with them and stuff and see what people are actually doing research on, which is very nice because you get to meet a lot of people. Um, and they also ask you questions and they make you question yourself and what you're interested in and how are you gonna like focus your research if you wanna do that, which is very, like, I, I would say it's fantastic um, in that terms. And we have also had like many guest lecturers and there's also a lot of people from, even though we have two main professors in the program, we have constantly professors coming from the CMES, like from Center for Middle Eastern Studies, uh, coming to as guest lecturers to talk about what they're special, what they specialized on, which is very nice. Um, but there's also opportunities for a lot of students to take internships. Um, we have two month internship possibility at the beginning of the third semester. So this year we had the opportunity to do it from August until October. Um, you can also do exchange studies, but that's like more to continue studies. But in terms of professional experience, I took an internship. Um, I went to Morocco this uh, year from August until October, which was very nice. Um, and I found it thanks to one of our professors. They are super helpful. Um, they asked us at like the beginning of the year, what are you interested in? Are you looking for a special, like a specific organization in a specific country or 
which area are you interested in? And I talked to my professor and I was like, well, I'm interested in migration in the Mediterranean. Um, I would really like to go to either Morocco or Tunisia. And she just sent me a lot of organizations. It was like, just try any of this um, and see if, see if they responded. And like, if they have respond and they did respond. So that was very nice. So I got the chance to go there um, for two months and I really learned a lot. So even if it's like not, directly given to you as a part of the program the professors are very willing to help you with that and to give you a lot of information about what you really want to work with so that's very appreciated sounds like you have a really good relationship with the professors or the researchers at the department as well or at the grad school and the same thing with asian studies which is very very nice to hear that you have that experience and what, uh, Rayquan, what are the actual facilities like? What, what does it look like? Where you study the classrooms, um, libraries? <laughs> I think our Asian Studies program is quite unique. Uh, we belong to the humanities and theology faculty, but we have also, besides having big classes in those, in Seoul or Lux, their, their main buildings, we also have a separate center ourselves, which is right next to LTH. So a lot of times I would just commute to school with a bunch of LTH students when I'm doing Asian studies. <laughs> yeah, but, and then we have a very small, tiny, very cozy center with its own um, Asian library with all books about Asia. And then we also have classes there and our professors have their offices there. So it's kind of like that. And we, we are both belong to a big faculty and we also have a smaller special place to our own kind of, yeah. Sounds amazing to have an entire library yeah. only focusing on yeah. Asian studies and yeah. Yeah, and it's next to LTH. So it's very, very convenient place in yeah. the center of student life. Wow, those, yeah. oh, that's really good. Yeah. And Alba for the Middle Eastern studies, well, what is it like to study there, the facilities and? Well, it's kind of different. I'm a bit jealous about having your own library because that's something we don't have. <laughs> um, I will I will ask about it. <laughs> but um, we study at Eden, which is one of the faculties, and it's the building of the graduate school. The setting is beautiful. Like the first time that I saw it, I was like, is this our building? Like what? It's beautiful. It's a very nice place. Um, like it's a it's kind of like a mini mini campus where you have like different buildings with different faculties from social sciences so you have like sociology gender studies the graduate school that it's include like includes different masters um then you have the psychology and they have different buildings and you have two main um libraries or study places with group rooms that you can work with you have to book them in advance if you want to use them. Just keep that in mind <laughs> because you might find a surprise that there's no space <laughs> sometimes. But um, if you book it, you will always have a chance to do to use them. There's coffee shops in these places, which is very nice, at least to like grab a cup of coffee in the break of the classes that we tend to have. That's really nice. Um, and like the classes are like quite big. To be fair, we're only like the course right now, we're 15 people maybe. Um, not even 15 at this point because people are in exchange and like internships and stuff so and the class is very big like and but that we have a lot of facilities um in the our building there's a student lounge where you have like microwaves to heat up your food if if you want to have lunch there if you want to study there if you need to do a group work there's always some type of space or couch that you can you can sit in and talk to your friends about this and that's very nice you will always have like a place to leave your bike as well because everyone just moves by bike around here um, and there's always space to do that in the faculty also in like the place where we're in in that campus in Eden there's also the office of the student union which is also very nice if you have any type of concern to go and tell them um, so overall like I really like the setting and we are not in the middle of student life as Asian studies because they are like right in the middle of all the nations and like LTH and everything but we are in the city center like really we are just five minutes walking by the main main square which is very nice and the main university building so it's a very beautiful setting and now that it's Christmas just walking out of class and going to the city center and see everything and the ice ring and stuff it's it's really beautiful I really like the setting yeah. thank you so much 
Uh, I can see we have a question here asking why we have no European studies student representative here. Uh, we were supposed to have a European studies representative, but she actually uh, got sick, so she couldn't attend. That's why we don't have one. Uh, otherwise, we would, of course, have another student representative as well. But if you have questions about the European studies program, I can either refer you to the uni bodies, which we have, I can send a link in the chat later on. Um, we have current students that you can chat to at any time. Ray one is actually one of the uni bodies. Uh, I think Alba, you're not a uni body at the moment, right? No, uh, but you're here anyways today, which is fantastic. Uh, I can post, post a link in the chat shortly, uh, but yeah, I'm sorry about they're not being a European study student, but hopefully you can you can ask any questions about student life or what it's like to study at Lund University anyways, if you have any questions, of course. Um, so I actually wanted to ask, um, uh, learning Swedish is something a lot of students are worried about before coming here. They ask us if they need to know Swedish or if the programs are taught in Swedish or, uh, if they can get by without knowing any Swedish. Ray Juan, what is your what is your take on that? I mean, you don't have to, but it's respectful for the Swedish society if you at least know something. Technically, we live in Sweden, but I mean in the professional on the school in the school settings, everything's in English at master's level. So I would say a lot of my professors, they're all not Swedish, so they don't understand Swedish either. Yeah, but by living in Sweden and Lund, it's nice to know some Swedish, especially if you want Swedish friends. Yeah, that's my take, kind of my take. Yeah. I'm, I'm not saying I'm so good at it or anything. I'm having trouble learning it, but at least I show them and trying. No, that's really nice. I think yeah. that's, that's yeah. nice wherever you go to try to learn some language, but... But knowing that you don't have to be fluent in yeah. Swedish or knowing Swedish is. Exactly. Do you have the same experience, Alba? Would you do you get by just knowing English? Yeah, like I came here with zero knowledge of Swedish. I I don't know if I knew how it sounded before I arrived here. Um, so I started like I also went a little bit crazy about this, and I started with Duolingo, like trying to learn Swedish as much as I could and stuff like this. But I arrived here, and it turns out everyone speaks English, so you kind of like can breathe. You're like, okay, that's fine. I can get through this. Um, everyone speaks English. Um, there's a lot of things, like even if you go to the supermarket. So that's totally fine. Um, all the students here speak fluently English, which is very helpful as well. Um, the only thing, like, of course, it's always nice to learn the language of the country you're going to be living in. Just like a little bit of respect and like basic things, like just say thank you or like, just order something at a coffee shop. That's always nice to do it in Swedish, but you have plenty of time to do that. And what I wanted to say is that they, there exists the SFI, like the Swedish for Immigrants course that you can take, that it's free. Um, it takes some time because there's always queue because there's a lot of students that want to learn Swedish. So it might take some time for you to be in the queue and to be able to apply for it um, or like not apply for it, but start it but it's something that a lot of people take advantage of and it, it turns out to be very nice and people get like very high levels of Swedish uh, from these classes. So that's always nice to do if you're considering like, especially if you're considering living in Sweden for longer than your master's program, it, it's always nice. Yeah. And that was actually one of the questions we had here, if there are any courses provided or opportunities to learn Swedish and I can post in the chat here, we have a web page about this, where you can find some more information about how to learn Swedish before you, you come here and also during your studies here, uh, no matter if you're an exchange student or degree student. And we also have some questions for you here, Ray Wan, in the Q&A. Uh, <clears throat> we have a student applying for Asian studies and have several questions for you. So how to quickly improve my English academic writing in Lund as English is not my native language. Uh, and also if my career goal is to study a PhD in Asian studies, what can I do or what network can I use at the master's level in Lund to get there? Okay, I will start from the 
English academic writing, how to improve it. I think the best way to improve it is just to actually write it. So the more you write, the more you read, you will act, you will naturally improve it. But one thing, if you do a lot of times, so you will get better and better at it. And so this, my program is very good because we're always some deadlines chasing us, asking me to write essays. So I think by following the thing, following the course schedule and really pay it, take time to make effort to write to and to try to to be aware of the english writing styles i think by reading the reading reading the reading is the more you read the more sometimes you get a better clearer and clearer picture of how academic english writing is like and you will improve in the way in the process of doing it that's my take of it i there's also opportunities to help you write English in sweet in Lund University. I think there's some writing centers or some resources for you for people for students to improve their English writing. I haven't really used them because I've already so busy with my studies. But if you are seriously aware of want to improve that in that sense, there's there's resources for you either in the in the Asian Studies Center or at Lund, at the university level. And uh, for the PhD in Asian studies, what would do network? I think our our the good thing about our center is we don't just have um, su master students and professors. We also have like three or four uh, current PhD students in their different years of their PhD degrees, and they are not necessarily from Sweden. I think none of them is Swedish, actually. Yeah. So if you're interested in a PhD degree, you can also reach out to them and to see how they develop their career in the academics. That's possible. And also in the student association, there are some student associations. One I am involved in is, is it's called the East Asia Student Association. And then they are also having events that kind of ask PhD students to share their career path into academia. So you can also take advantage of it. I can send you the um, name of the student association. And that's my answer. Thank you. Thank you so much, Rayhan, for a really good answer. Uh, and we now have a question for you, Alba. We have a student currently living in Egypt who would love to return uh, to if, during their master's studies. Uh, do you know if there are any internships with institutions here? More generally, what other countries are there internships available? Um, thank you for the question. It's very nice. I actually, one of my best friends is currently in Egypt, so it's very nice to hear. Um, well, in terms of internships, the internships, you can look for them anywhere you want. So either in Sweden, in Europe, or outside of it. So it doesn't matter where you want to go. Um, if you want to go to Egypt, just look for associations in Egypt or institutions in Egypt that are taking interns and you would like to do um, an internship with them and ask for a two month internship. And then like there is this, the internship agreement that you will receive a lot of information on and like a lot of talks about this um, on how to fill it. But you just send them the internship agreement, they sign it, you give it back to the university and that's it. So you don't have a list of internships to choose from you can just contact anyone, anyone you want. Um, it's, it's sometimes a bit difficult because there's like endless options to send emails. So I understand that it can be like a bit overwhelming. So if you don't have an idea of which institutions or which organizations to contact, then I would advise you to talk to our teachers here as well. Um, one of the teachers um, that we have that it's a permanent teacher, she's from Egypt as well. So I'm sure she could help you find any type of internship or organizations that you could work with. Um, and if you're not so sure about whether or not to take an internship, but would you really want to go to Egypt? Um, we do have exchange programs with different um, countries and Egypt is one of them. So my friend who is currently there, he's studying in Cairo, in the American University of Cairo, in AUC. Um, we also have the possibility to go to Jordan, to go to um, Lebanon, and they are trying to open other places and other destinations in other countries as well. So in, if you are interested in that, just um, you can also take the exchange 
But as for the internship, that's the thing that I would advise you. Just like look for the institutions you want to work with and send an email, an email and be like, hey, I would like to take an internship for two months with you guys. Uh, like, how would you feel about that? And just like when it's the time, send the agreement and that's it. So really good advice there. I think an internship is something a lot of students are really interested in as it also gives you like experience and connections for perhaps your future future work as well. And, and talking about experience and so on, uh, Alba, you're studying the Middle East program. Uh, what are your career ambitions after completing the program? Well, what do you want to work with? Well, that's a triggering question that last year I might have not answered. <laughs> <laughs> But um, the, doing the internship actually just helped me realize what I really want to do, um, which is, yeah, it's actually great. I'm very happy about that at this point. Um, I really want to work with research. I'm very interested in research, but not in academics. So I did my internship with a think tank um, in Morocco, and I would like to work with think tanks that work in the Mediterranean area um, to just like help and provide like new routes or like new frontiers and new border regimes in the region that facilitate the transit of people and that are not as violent and deadly as they are right now. So I would really like to work on this topic. Um, I do not discard though working with international organizations that work with migration. Um, so I've also been looking at like the um, IOM, so International Organization of Migration, or even like inside the European Union or inside the United Nations. Um, there is a lot of diversity inside the program of the different careers that everyone will take. So there's people who are just considering working for a big multinational in the Middle East. There's people who want to pursue a PhD. There's other people who just want to work in museums and are, are interested in the cultural heritage of the Middle East, or uh, one of my best friend she's very interested in cinema and wants to work with um cinema coming from the middle east and how it's represented in europe so we have like the fact that the program is interdisciplinary you can you will sure see a lot of diversity between all of the people who attend the classes which is very nice and very exciting and you can just learn from all of them um that's very nice yeah Wonderful. Thank you so much, Alba. And Rehuan, if I ask you the same question, you're studying Asian studies. Uh, what are your career ambitions after completing your degree program? Just as Alba said, I am, my, my internship is in next semester. I haven't started it. But I'm also going to be at a think tank. And so I think I will try to see if I enjoy the work there as a policy oriented think tank that focus on the security and development issues on, in Asia. Mm -hmm. So I will think, yes, I will pay it. I will probably uh, pursue a career in that way. But also just as Alba said, we have a lot of different students who came to this interdisciplinary program for all different purposes so it's also exciting to see how some people want to they're like we want to stay in academia we want to apply for phds further and some people are some people are here and after that they want to go back to their own country to develop develop their personal careers and all kinds of different stuff yeah but i i would say even my experience might not even be the represented might not cannot even represent the majority the majority um, career path in my program yeah well that's quite exciting though that you actually have a lot of opportunities and you can decide which path to choose yourself depending on who you are as a person and i think that's very important and, and uh, Rayvan, if I continue with you, is there anything you wish you knew uh, before you came to Lund University and studied Asian studies? Something you've thought about afterwards that, oh, I wish I knew this before coming. Can be both positive and negative. <laughs> this is a very good question, but I think I need some time. <laughs> um, I wish I knew how to to use the resources that's available to me better. A lot of the times, for example, right now I'm trying to do something with the with some on, online database 
and I, I wasn't necessarily aware of how to use those stuff, or I was just oblivious of the abundance of resources that was available to me. And now I'm starting to use them. But I feel like I could have done this way earlier. Yeah. So there's like, I feel like it's important for students to kind of be aware of the resources and the opportunities that the university uh, presents to them so they can make full use of it. That's something I would, because in the beginning, when we first came here as international students, we were so excited about moving into a different society and meet new students. I wasn't necessarily paying a lot of attention of that things I could have done better academically. And now I'm starting to appreciate them now. Yeah. So that's something I would like to do. Yes. Yeah. What, what do you think, Alba? Well, I, I agree. Like with this, like being aware of the endless resources that we have at our hand, it's incredible. Like it's very useful. Um, and I also think that I realized that a bit late, <laughs> to be fair. But I would say that um, I wish I had known that it's okay not to have already the path that you want to take in mind, because that's something that's always created me a lot of anxiety in terms of like um, my career or like in my studies and everything. I've always had everything planned. And when you're doing like a master's program, you're like expected to have like or in my head, I had the, I, in my head, I was expected to have a career like planned or have a plan after the master's and stuff. But as I went through it, I was like, okay, I'm actually taking this time to realize what I like. I'm having all this information at my hand and I'm reading all of this and I'm receiving different inputs. And from this, I can now be like, okay, yeah, I will do this. So with the internship, for example, research is something I always said no I'm never going to do this in my life but because I've always thought no I cannot like just keep writing I I'm tired of writing essays I don't want to do this anymore but then with the internship everything changed and I was like okay maybe it's a path that I can take so I wish I knew that you're like from the beginning that you're able to change paths along the way along the master's um, change perspective, change interest, and that's okay, because I would have saved myself a lot of anxiety for many months, <laughs> so that, that would have been nice, and I would also say in terms of um, the student life or living alone, that, like, that it is okay to, like, some not feel at your fullest all the time. I wish I had known that sooner as well, because here, like, sometimes it can get a bit lonely, you're on your own and stuff, and, like, you just have to learn how to live with yourself um, if you're like living in a room or whatever, like and meeting new people and stuff and that that, that is OK and that everyone goes through the same thing and everyone's struggling with the same issues that you are. And you can always rely on different people and to talk about these things. So, yeah. And, and if I may add like one last thing that I realized this year. Um, it's that the, there's like free assistance, like psychological systems for everyone, um, for students at Lund University. And that's something I wish I knew before. Not a lot of people use it. Not a lot of people are aware of it. And I, I wish I knew that sooner because it's, it's literally changing the way that I'm living my experience here in Sweden. So I, I wish I knew that also. <laughs> oh, that's really nice to hear. Also, I would like to add something. Yes, now I thought of it because mm -hmm. a lot of students want to study Asian studies with a specific country or place they want to specialize in in their mind. But Lund University, because my program is not very big, we might not necessarily have the permanent faculty that focuses on the region you want to focus on. So I would recommend students who want to to a special place to kind of go through the faculty list to see what um, the regions our professors or our researchers are specializing in. Because if your region match with anyone's region, you would re obviously receive more assistance in your career and, and your like learning yeah. yeah, and so on. So yeah, that's my suggestion to future perspectives. Perspective students.
Thank you. And of course, it's impossible to know everything before you arrive, uh, but I think it is still think it's nice to share share some thoughts. Students arriving next year will also come up with new things that they wish they knew before arriving. It's just part of part of the learning process. Uh, but also now I'm just jumping back and forth between different topics. Uh, I apologize for that. <laughs> but uh, you previously talked about walking between class and home and between different activities. So what is the best way to get around in Lund? It's quite a small town. Do you need to go by bus or can you take the bike or walk or is it long distances between the different places? Ray Juan. Okay, I gotta say, people have been put like, Put an image in mind, like in Lund, everyone goes with bike. And then that's the first thing I did when I came to Lund, I bought a bike. But then it soon got too cold for me to ever be on a bike. <laughs> so I regret having a bike, personally. Yes, I ended up either walking, because walking is not that cold, or taking the bus. Mm -hmm. The bus is very convenient. And also, if you don't mind, like, yeah. And I think there are two kinds of people. One is that insist on riding bikes at in zero degrees outside, crazy, which in my opinion. <laughs> and one kind of people would just take buses. I'm second kind of person. Yeah. <laughs> Fair one, enough. <laughs> yes. It's so cold. Why would people buy, use bikes? <laughs> you need the right clothes, Rayman. <laughs> yes. No, yes. fair enough. And Alba, how about you? Well, I will agree. Um, I would say that like coming from a Mediterranean country, it gets very cold very fast. And um, like during the day you can bike, but it gets dark very quickly as well. So if you're if you're brave enough to do it, it's very doable. Like it's you don't have big hills to go with. So the bike, like during the summer, I enjoy so much going with the bike around like it's just because of the weather and because of like my personal preferences as well. But it's like very easy to move around with the bike. I personally like to walk to places and the fact that everything is so close and like it's not that big and you have everything very concentrated in the same place. So like you have the city center and the student like the student center in a way like around the nations and stuff. Everything is so close so you can just walk around a lot. Um, that's also very nice to see and like just to see the city and the environment. I really appreciate that. It's very nice. Um, the buses the, work perfectly. I'm just like, yeah, in my city, they come like whenever they want. But here you have like the app where you can just like check them and they, you know the time when they're coming, which is great. Um, and now because of where I live, I can also take the tram to the city center. Wow. And I love the tram. It's like my favorite type of transport, which is great. Um, and I would also want to mention for people who don't do not live in Lund and that maybe live in Malmo, for example, there's a lot of people who, at least in my class, who live in Malmo and have to commute. And for them, it's also very easy because there's a lot of trains coming constantly. Um, not, I wouldn't say as reliable as the bus because the bus is always there on time, but they tend to be quite reliable and people tend to make it on time to places, um, even if they come from Malmo or from other places around Lund. So do not like stress out a lot if you cannot find a place to stay if you in Lund like in the city um if you live in Miami or someone else like that's totally fine because there's a lot of ways to commute as well I also appreciate the public transport system in the region we're living in Skåne south of Sweden very much the app is great like even if the train breaks down at least they will tell us we don't have to get to the stations and realize the train is not going anymore so and I think the bike season is like from May to September after other than that walk or yes. <laughs> let's summarize it with yes. that <laughs> let's stick to That's biking my personal summer. take <laughs> yes makes sense fair enough um and uh, let me see here sorry so we just have about five minutes to go but you mentioned something important Alba you mentioned the word nation so I was wondering because that's something a lot of students wonder about as well what are nations so can you explain that a little bit to people who may not know about it yeah that, that is a cultural shock that I was like whoa what is this because yeah, like the way that I explain it to my friends and family back home is like American fraternities and sororities, but in a healthier way. 
So like <laughs> what I've experienced is like, it's just as if it was an organization or association of students who are just like living together, like in, they, they have like this type of building. That's where I live right now. I'm living in one of the nations and you live, you, you have this housing um, and they also have um, their own space where they have their own bar, their own club. Um, they organize activities that you can join, weekly activities, the different nations, they do different type of things. So the one that I'm part of, for example, they organize live gigs. So you can come here and enjoy live music. But then there's other nations that organize a lot of sports activities. And then there's other ones who are focused on like hiking and doing like more this type of other things. So um that's something that you just have to explore when you got when you get here. It's very nice to just join. Like there's also need to keep in mind that if you join one, you can go to all of them. Like you can go to all of the events that the others organize. So it's very nice. You will always have something to do because if it's not this nation might have a pub on Wednesday, but the next one will have it on Thursday and the other one will just have a club on Friday. So you will always be able to go to any of the nations that you will like. So my recommendation would be to just like come here, um, take a look at the different nations, join the one that you like the most. A lot of them just have this novice period that you can join and they just organize activities so that you meet other people from the nation, which is very great. That's how I met a lot of Swedish people. So that's that's nice. And then like just participate in the activities that they do and you just create a very nice community. So I think that's very nice. Yeah. Perfect. Thank you so much for describing that, Alba. Once again, something students often ask about. I do have, now that we only have three minutes left, a final question for both of you. Uh, starting with you, Rayhan. So if a student is interested in studying a master's degree, why should they choose to study Asian studies and why at Lund University? I think the Chern, um, this Asian studies program in Lund gives you the opportunity to explore not just the country or the place you want to focus on, it instead broadens your horizon by giving you the opportunities to deep into the issues that's happening in the societies of other regions, which is also in Asian studies. For example, I am more focused on East Asia, but I also learned a lot about Southeast Asia and which I think is going to be also useful for my development of knowledge about East Asia as well. And that is something that is more unique to Lund University because a lot, I think other universities who do the same program would ask you to have a focus in the very beginning and, and otherwise. And the second question, I think Lund is a great place. So, and it's actually, what one thing I have to say that makes me kind of enjoy Lund is it's expensive. Sweden is an expensive place, but living here, the rent we're paying is actually pretty, reasonable like and i think that makes a lot of sense yes I, I i really like this kind of socialist vibes of charging rents yeah because i the rent people are pay, paying on average is only three thousand four i think four thousand crowns like per, per person per month so it's like 400 euros compared to a lot of different universities in different countries you have to pay way more than that mm -hmm. and that is something if you are not financially free then that is something i can appreciate and take advantage of about sweden yeah thank you so much raymond <clears throat> and alba the same question for you if someone's interested in studying why should they choose the middle eastern program and why would you recommend them to come to lund university specifically well in terms of the middle east i think it's a region that it's very stigmatized um especially like in what we consider the west or the north in general and i think it's like very much needed to have much more research coming from the region it's incredibly important that we use this to destigmatize and to like bring new perspective and to fight all the narratives that come um that are incredibly just like judgmental of the region so I think that's very interesting in on the one hand um also like in my case it's because I am 
incredibly related to it, even if I'm just like from Europe, but like in Barcelona, we have a lot of communities coming from there. There's a lot of migration coming from these countries. Um, and I do believe that like more people studying the region, it's very nice that they just like, it, it will make kind of like coexistence much better um, and like politics much better and like exchanges much better. So I think it's very important that people just focus a little bit on this region for a change. <laughs> Um, so I would have written, yeah, that's that's one of the reasons why I did it. I also want to say that like the language is beautiful and we have the the opportunity here in Lund to learn Arabic, which is perfect. Like it's very nice. It's included in the program and you can choose to do it. Um, and that's why one of the reasons why I think like choosing Lund University is great because you can also learn language. Um, I would also say that the fact that you can go abroad, like either for exchange or you can um, do an internship abroad. That's very nice because if you're someone who wants to go back, as the question that we had, wants to go back to their country because they come from the region or because you've never lived in the region before and you want to experience it, um, they give you the perfect opportunity to do so. And also there's not that many like programs in Europe that are focused on the Middle East. So that's it's something very unique and it's an opportunity that I think like a lot of people could benefit from, yeah. Thank you so much. So with that, we're actually two minutes over. And I would first of all like to thank Ray Juan and Alba so much for joining. It was really helpful and you had really great answers to all these questions. And also thank you so much for those of you attending. I'm gonna post in the chat here a link to where you can actually continue chatting with current students at the university. We have a platform called Unibody, which I briefly mentioned before. Uh, Ray Juan is on the platform representing Asian studies, but we also have students from the Middle Eastern program and a student representative from the European studies program as well, for those of you who are interested in chatting with a student from that program as well. So with that, I wish all of you, well, it's an evening here in Sweden, so I'm going to wish all of you a lovely evening, perhaps a lovely morning, depending on where you're at, uh, and hope to stay in touch. So thank you very much and have a great evening. Thank you. Thank you. Good luck. Bye. Bye. Thank you. <laughs>